For centuries, mining companies have been present on the international scene, but particularly in underdeveloped countries. This video will present the case of a mining project in San Rafael Las Flores, Guatemala, and its impact on local people. It involves a Canadian company, Tahoe Resource, which started the Escobar mining project in April 2013. The government has long been a supporter of the mine operation. In May 2013, Guatemalan President Otto Perez Molina declared a military state of siege in the area for one month and deployed thousands of police and military personnel. The state of siege served to guarantee the stability of the operating mining project by suspending constitutional rights, including freedom of movement, freedom of assembly and protest, and rights of detainees and prisoners. It's really when you've broken the trust in the community. I mean, people live through a state of siege. Thousands of troops in the community, people's families were deeply traumatized when the military and the police burst into their homes looking for their dads or their moms who had to go in hiding and not knowing if they were going to see their parents again. In the context of a community divided by support for and opposition to the Escobar mine project, many people have been affected by acts of violence, intimidation and repression. Shortly after it began operation in 2013, security guards shot protesters outside the silver mine, wandering several. The head of security at the time, Alberto Rodondo, faces criminal charges in Guatemala for ordering the attack. Yes, that's right. There's been um, the civil lawsuit um, is now proceeding in British Columbia courts. The first, the British Columbia Appeal Court, and uh, found that British Columbia is indeed the best jurisdiction for the the case to be heard, given that there's a tremendous chance of injustice uh, should it be sent back to to Guatemala. And so, um, and now that the Supreme Court of Canada has denied. Uh, Tahoe on appeal, um, the, the case is clear to proceed toward an actual trial. So, uh, I w work with a couple of organizations uh, that provide human rights accompaniment. And so they uh, live in Guatemala uh, when uh, the leaders uh, uh, are, like, they talk in public, sometimes they'll stand beside them. Uh, to, to let people know there's an international presence to discourage um, uh, acts of violence. 16 years old Topacio Reynoso and her father, Alex Reynoso, were attacked by unknown gunmen on the evening of April 13, 2014, on their way home from a festival. Topacio Reynoso did not survive the bullet wound. Her father did. The father and daughter had helped organize referendums in July and August 2013, in which more than 98% of the participants, that means 23,000 voters, opposed the Escobar mine. There was confrontation in the community, and that wasn't a good relation. In fact, it limited the exercise of the right to consultation in the community. Moreover, San Rafael Las Flores is the main municipality where the project is taking place and where started a series of criminal acts. Um, people have uh, experienced problems related to traffic, to dust, to noise pollution, light pollution. Um, and then recently, or in the last year, um, there's been um, impacts on houses um, from underground explosions. Publicly and behind the National Civil Police, things that draws attention is that they are exercising authority on you. I don't know, Commissaire Godinez, if you have authorized these intimidating people. This is a clear violation. They are committing a crime because they have no authority. We are on state land and you can't fight. I want to tell you, that I am very concerned about this mining issue here in San Rafael Las Flores. The reality 
is that they are going to contaminate all the department of Santa Rosa. We ask the miners to please respect what the society and residents say.